Man pads aren't what you think they are. The man part stands for man, yes, but the P stands for portable, and the ADS stands for air defense system. The Stinger missile is one such a man portable air defense system, and the US is sending many to Ukraine. Here are the details. The US recently committed to sending another $350 million worth of weapons to Ukraine, bringing the one-year total donation to $1 billion. Among these weapons are a large number of Stinger missiles, which are designed to destroy fighter jets and helicopters with the pull of a trigger. The Stinger system can be carried by one person and is fired from the shoulder. The operator aims the launcher at the target until the missile's infrared seeker locks onto the heat of the target's aircraft engine exhaust. When the seeker locks on, it makes a buzzing noise. The operator then pulls the trigger, causing a small launch rocket to shoot the missile out of the tube. This launch rocket then drops away, and the missile's folded steering fins pop out. The main rocket ignites, propelling the Stinger to approximately 2,500 kilometers per hour, or Mach 2. The missile uses its steering fins to steer itself to the target automatically. When it gets close to the aircraft, its warhead detonates, destroying vital systems with blast effect and fragmentation. The system was heavily used by Afghan fighters during the Soviet occupation of the 1980s. Up to 250 Soviet fixed-wing aircraft and helicopters were claimed to have been shot down by Stingers. In total, the Stingers credited with around 300 shootdowns worldwide. Ukraine's armed forces seem to be destroying a lot of Russian tanks with the expensive shoulder-fired missile systems that the West has given to Ukraine. Here are the details. Reuters reports that U.S. President Joe Biden's recent gift to Ukraine of $350 million worth of U.S. weapons brings the total of U.S. assistance package to $1 billion over just the last year. The donation includes a large number of Javelin anti-tank weapons. The Javelin system has a day sight as well as an infrared sight for targeting armored vehicles at night. The missile's computer locks onto the target. A small charge blasts out of the tube before the powerful rocket engine ignites. Here, the folded fins pop out to steer the weapon to the target. The weapon can be fired directly at buildings, or the operator can set it to top attack mode, in which case the missile flies up to 150 meters before slamming down on a tank from above. Once it gets close to the target, the missile's first warhead detonates to activate the tank's reactive armor. After the reactive armor explodes, the main warhead detonates against the tank's thin top armor, where the shaped charge of the warhead punches a hole through the armor, causing the tank's ammunition to detonate. The Javelin is a fire and forget system that can destroy tanks up to 2 kilometers away. It can defeat armor that's up to 80 centimeters thick. The launcher can be reloaded, and each missile costs either $80,000 or $175,000, depending on who you ask. Warfare is starting to get more high-tech, as the world's biggest militaries are starting to field remote-controlled light and heavy tanks to add to the growing arsenal of remote-controlled flying drones. The U.S. military is currently developing packs of semi-autonomous robot tanks that will be armed to the brim with chain guns, missiles, and other fearsome weaponry. As they make their way to future battlefields, these robotic combat vehicles, or RCVs, will be used to lead the charge in both conventional and electronic warfare in the years to come. The U.S. is currently building robotic light, medium, and heavy combat vehicles. Respectively, these are lightweight scouting vehicles, heavily armed mini-tanks, and powerful artillery vehicles. For now, the Army wants to make sure that it's a human pulling the trigger on the weapons, so each vehicle will have one human remotely steering and another remotely operating its weapons. The tanks will still be partially autonomous, but humans will take over once they reach the front lines and when they need to steer them through enemy fire. In addition to direct combat, the Army wants the RCVs to take down swarms of drones. This might take the form of anti-drone lasers or electronic jamming that renders drones useless. Ukraine has been having success in using Turkish-made drones to infiltrate the airspace above invading Russian convoys and turning the convoys into exploding fireballs. Here are the details. The Wall Street Journal reports that the Ukrainian Air Force is crediting its new Turkish-made drones with destroying a large number of Russian weapon systems with guided bombs. The chief commander of Ukraine's armed forces, Valery Zaluzny, posted a video of such a drone strike turning multiple Russian trucks into a fireball, adding the comment, Welcome to hell. The video was posted on Facebook with text that says the Bayraktar drone struck a Russian convoy near the city of Melin, around 97 kilometers northwest of the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. A few such videos show multiple bombs hitting Russian weapon systems in wooded areas and in convoys. The drones seem to be very effective at exploiting long Russian military convoys stuck in traffic jams. 
These stuck convoys present the drones with the opportunity to target an explosive-laden target like a supply truck. Once the truck and its explosives are hit, the massive explosion often blows up multiple surrounding vehicles and troops. Russian troops have been seen deploying anti-aircraft missiles effectively against such drones. Ukraine began receiving shipments of the drones in 2019. The drone's primary function is to use its high-powered cameras to view the battlefield and laser-correct artillery strikes. It can stay aloft for 24 hours, flying at a maximum altitude of 7.6 kilometers. A remote pilot can fly the drone from as far away as 300 kilometers in good weather. A few of Russia's feared thermobaric missile launchers have been entering the Ukraine, which means that large parts of Ukrainian suburbs could soon be vacuum-bombed, leading to massive civilian casualties. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S. says Russia has started using thermobaric weapons to bomb Ukrainian cities. This comes in the wake of multiple social media posts showing TOS-1 thermobaric missile launchers entering Ukraine. The TOS-1 vehicle can fire 24 thermobaric missiles in 15 seconds, and each missile can destroy buildings within hundreds of meters of the detonation point. The missile can be fired up to 6 kilometers away. When it hits its target, an initial charge distributes an aerosol made up of very fine material, which could be anything from a carbon-based fuel to tiny metal particles. This highly flammable cloud is then ignited by a second charge. When the cloud erupts, it creates a massive shockwave, as well as a vacuum as it sucks up all surrounding oxygen. The blast wave can last for significantly longer than a conventional explosive and is capable of vaporizing human bodies. It is, however, designed to destroy defensive positions, which means it causes massive damage to city buildings, while also causing many human casualties. Dr. Marcus Hellyer of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute says it's only a matter of time before Russia starts using thermobaric weapons, as their use is pretty standard in terms of Russian warfare tactics. Hellyer said he expected to see more thermobaric warfare in Ukraine. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.